Hello, everyone. This is From Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Daniel Goodwin, and over there is John Lewandowski. Hey. How are you doing, John? Pretty good. How's uh, How are we enjoying this weather? Lovely. It's like Nashville right now's weather is here. Mm-hmm. I, I, I would like to thank Nashville for their weather. <laughs> mm-hmm. Normally, this time of year, we're seeing 40s and 30s, so... um. If you're in the local Milwaukee area, please, uh, today and tomorrow, it's supposed to be in the 70s. There is a cold front behind um, this that is in Fargo, I believe, right now. Sorry, I paid way too much attention to the weather. Me and John both are weather enthusiasts. So <laughs> mm-hmm. um, when it comes to weather, we pay, we pay attention to almost the entire country, almost. Uh, mostly local, but um, and entirely lo- uh, that part. Um, and an update. Um, this morning, uh, Kiefer Sherwood was sent on waivers to Milwaukee. Uh, it was required. It, it is a requirement to, in order to send him down. Um, I would not be surprised to see uh, if he does clear uh, to see Tomasino or um, uh, who was it? Tomasino or is it Evangelista or is it uh? There was a couple of players that have either Tomasito or Jankowski, one of the two, because they both have been playing lights out down here. Yeah. And they 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 at least deserve a shot. Um so that was announced by Elliot Friedman this morning. So that's a quick announcement there. Uh, yesterday, the Preds took on the Oilers. Um, the reason we didn't cover that game live is, one, I had about with a 24-hour stomach flu along with laryngitis. So um, John was – and I made the decision the day before – well, before I even came down with the stomach flu that just with laryngitis, we were going to cover this in the morning because – the Admirals played at 1030 this morning, so it was just better off for us. It's always right. better off. If we have a schedule like that, it's just better off. Now we have a day to prepare for the West Coast for Saturday. So, um, for Friday and Saturday. Um, the Preds, um, how do I put it? Change is needed where it's starting to become blurry. Right. I'm not thinking that I'm starting to think that McDonough, as much as I like him as a player, is not a fit for this system. Yeah. That's one. Two, I think that Hines shuffling things all the time gives the players an air of inconsistency. Mm-hmm. Um instability. And inconsistency and instability, um, they they kind of do go hand in hand, but when you mix them together, it can cause a giant mess, and that is not good for a hockey team when chemistry is everything. Right. You have to trust the guys you work with. So um, your scratches for this game were, just so everyone could read, Cody Glass, Zach Sanford, Jordan Gross. Now, what's that say for Cody Glass? Right. Here's the funny part. Sherwood, nine penalty minutes, two hits. One giveaway, two takeaways, nine minutes on ice. All right? If I'm key for Sherwood, I'm unhappy about how how things are going up there. If I'm anybody on this team, I'm unhappy about the inconsistency. Right. And the Preds play tomorrow now uh, against Calgary. Um, Calgary is five, th- five and three. Uh, Country is their points leader with six points. He has four goals. Um. Let's see. I believe Jacob Markstrom is their starting tendy. Uh, their top assist getter is uh, Rasmus Anderson. He's a defenseman for them, so those are your guys to watch. 
Um, the, your plus minus guy to watch is Mark Stone over there. Um, yeah, Markstrom. Uh, he is uh four and one with a two point six goals against. Um, and Dan Vladar with a three point eight goals against one and two. Uh, Kevin Lankin is our is our backup. He's only played two games, so they're running Saros dry again. Um, he's played. Well, let's see, two, five, one. So he's played eight games already out of the ten that we've played. Uh, the Preds and the power play are 28th on, in the league. They're 10th in penalty kill, 6th in faceoff, 28th, 28th in goals for, and 24th in goals against. Yeah. Um, We're also in 27th position in the entire league. We've also played more games than anyone in the entire league. Right. I think a handful have been just swamped with games. I'm gonna double check the league standings here, but uh yes, they are 27th of the league with 10 games played. St. Louis is 30th with um eight games played, but they've only played eight games. They've also right. lost five straight. Um Nashville had lost five straight or lost four straight. Now we've lost two straight. Actually, I think we lost five straight, and now we've lost two straight. We are three, six, and one. This is not the start we want. Right. Um, it's to the point where we're tied with Arizona. We have to make a decision. If we're going to rebuild, start selling now. Right. Um, but let's get into this Edmonton game because I don't want to sit here and complain long too long. <laughs> mm. So uh, the stats in this game, I'm gonna let John do those while uh, the wonderful host here tries to figure yeah. out. Yeah. <laughs> um. Anyways, the Oilers outshot the Predators 37 to 23. In the face-off circle, the Oilers were better 54 percent to 46 percent. Um, on the power play, the Oilers went two for six. The Predators went two for two. In penalty minutes, uh, the Predators had 17, the Oilers nine. Hits, the Predators had 60, the Oilers 27. Blocks, the Predators 24, the Oilers 10. And giveaways, 16 for the Oilers, 10 for the Predators. All right. Um... The, the stat that really sticks out to me is they are back to their physical hockey. They outshot, outblocked them. They out hit them. Yeah. They got more takeaways. Right. But they got to stay out of the box. Yeah. Scoring in the first was uh, Matias Ekholm with his first of the year off of a very nice little play from uh, Granlin and Duchesne. To each other, and then uh, Ekholm had an easy tap in. Um, and then Evander Kane scores two straight goals. Um, both of them are assisted by Dreisaitl. Uh The first goal is assisted by Nurse, his fourth, and uh, the second goal is assisted by Yamamoto, his third. Dreisaitl's 13th and 14th, Kane's third and fourth. Yeah, imagine reading that one out. <laughs> Uh, mm -hmm. Connor McDavid, who has been a thorn in the Predators' side, the, the Edmonton Oilers are 7-0-1 against the Predators since McDavid's draft. Um, Derek Ryan had scored his first with an assist from Tyson Berry and Devin Shore. Then in the second period... In the second period, Connor McDavid scored his 11th, assisted by Dry Seidel, his 15th. That was on the power play. And then at the 9.28 mark, Ryan Johansson scores his fourth, assisted by Yossi, his fourth, and Forsberg, his sixth. That was also on the power play. Then in the third period, Phil Forsberg scores his third of the season with an assist from Matt Duchesne, his seventh, and Gradlin, his eighth. Uh, looks like those guys are back to their ways, um, only if they can figure out how to do it on a more consistent basis. I think that's a good stepping point, but finding mm -hmm. out what's wrong with this team overall is becoming a problem. Right. 
Uh, Leon Dreisaitl scores on the power play with an assist from Brian Nugent Hopkins and Connor McDavid. Nugent Hopkins fifth, McDavid seventh. Or sorry, Dreisaitl's fifth, Nugent Hopkins seventh, McDavid's tenth. That was on the power play. Then Nino Niederreiter scores his fifth with an assist from Roman Yossi, his fifth with an assist from Forsberg as well, his seventh. That was on the power play. Then Evander Kane scores an empty net goal with his fifth and giving him the hat trick with an assist from Dry Seidel, his 16th, and McDavid, his 11th. Um, the one thing about that Evander Kane empty net goal, he actually started that whole play. Um, Nashville defended well. Um, just not well enough because obviously they got the puck to Cade and Cade buried it. So um, that's your night. The one kicker here is Saros stayed in the whole game. Yeah. Um, so he stopped 30 of 36 with a point eight three three save percentage. Uh, Jack Campbell was in net for Edmonton with a net with 19 saves on 23 shots with a 82.6 save percentage. Um, looking forward, uh, both teams, Calgary and Nashville, are riding a two-game losing streak, so something's got to give. Right. Um, that's all we got for you there. Um. Uh, this show has been brought to you by the wonderful folks at Hockey Hawker 2002, West Hart Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You can call them at 414 800 Thank you guys for watching. I'm Dana Goma, and that's John Landowski.